Mom! Dad! This is the actual, is is the actual, actual intro song, song to Blue, okay. yeah. Bingo! Bluey! <laughs> Um, so this is Bluey the video game, which I believe at the end of last year I said was going to be the game of the year, based on zero information, other than I liked the uh, Bluey TV show from watching it a lot with my niece. It genuinely right. is one of the best like kids TV shows where they have that thing where um, it's very entertaining to the, to the children, but also there's a lot of funny stuff to the adults in it sort of thing. Right. So, so you rate you rate the, the show? Yeah, I think great there's... Great for children, great for adults. Yeah, it, like, I don't mind watching an episode of Bluey when I'm looking after my niece, so... Um, and I saw it was on Xbox Game Pass, um, so I was like, oh, that'd be pretty funny to try out. Like, my friend, uh, Jesse, who's best with Game Pass, he played the entirety of, like, Paw Patrol Grand Prix, which is another, like... I've never seen Paw Patrol myself, but that's another like big kid show at the moment is Paw Patrol. Um, I told my sister about this uh, game because I was like, oh, I got it on Games Pass and I could uh, play it with um, my niece because she was like, um, she'd be interested in it. And she was like, oh, I already got it. I bought it on the Switch and played it. I was like, oh, okay. So she, she'd she already played this game when I was uh, telling her about it. Um, but... Yeah, I, I think the, the animation style is pretty pretty close to Bluey, but it, it's different because Bluey's like full 2D and then this game you're having like 2D characters in a 3D space. So the quality is a little lower in this game in terms of animation quality just because it's um, mixing those two styles. But um, right. I said it was going to no, be... The... No, I, have no, I have no comparison, so I'm just like, is this what the show looks like then? Yeah, it's quite similar to this, but without the 3D stuff. Just imagine it's all 2D sort of thing. Right. Like, it's a, it's an Australian show, but then I think it's also... It's, like, part funded by the Australian government, and then it's distributed by the BBC, I think, as well. Um, okay, interesting. <laughs> funded by all. But, yeah, there's lots of, like, uh, crazy characters that, like... It's just a, like a very wholesome TV show about parents playing with their kids and the kids, the adventures they get up to. Um, like they they had this episode where they dress up as grannies, and the dad has to drive them around on the bus as the bus driver, and then the grannies are like, "Oh, hello, dearie, I need you to make a stop here," and just like they they like hard commit to like deep role playing for these kids, and it's like very funny to watch. Um, but it's like okay, okay. very wholesome in the same way. But I went into this because it was like, oh, it's free Netflix Game Pass. It'll be fun to play. And apparently, How Long to Beat says this game was an hour long. And I was like, I, <laughs> okay. I was like, I put, I put up a time. I, well, I was recording, so I had a time. And I was like, okay, I can, I can get the sub hour run. Give it to me. And I, yeah, I can play in about 50, 55 minutes, something like that. Um, the game is really short and it's very easy. I don't know what I was expecting. I went into it and I was like, because I feel like watching the TV show I went in and I was like, oh, it's a kid's TV show. And I watched it and I was so surprised how good it was for being a kid's TV show. I was like, oh, adults can enjoy this too because it's um, so well made. Maybe yeah. my expectations going into this were... Oh, the game is going to be like something that's really fun for kids, but also could be entertaining for adults. Oh, it's, I see. Like to end, like yeah, like, I thought maybe it would thing, mimic but... the show, but it turns out that didn't translate over. It is a pretty simple game that a child could play. Um, I went through the Steam reviews for this, and they were like, um, "I thought it was okay, like it's really simple." But my son who loves bluey and his five says this is the best thing ever made like it's like as an adult if you play this right, game right. you have to understand that you're probably not going to get much of enjoyment out of it but the, the the kid that enjoyed bluey is gonna like absolutely love this so if you're like a parent or like have young relatives or stuff like that right this would probably be a good game to put on them because i it's super simple like my uh niece is a bit too young uh, to play a game like this, but she would enjoy watching right. it, sort of thing. Um, but yeah, 
Um, okay, so how, how, old, how old do you have to be before you play a game like this? Then? I don't know. I, I played Doom when I was five, so I'd say probably around five. <laughs> you know? Like, one of the first games I ever played was Doom and Duke Nukem. So if I if I was playing Doom and Duke Nukem at five, I think, I don't know, three, four to play Bluey. Um, they're saying uh, kids are getting less and less uh, tech literate because when we grew up as kids, whenever we had an issue, we'd have to, like, go and, like, Google it or, like, try and figure out how to fix things ourselves. But kids now these days... Yeah. If they don't know how to I... fix something, they don't look up how to fix it. They just give up. Yeah. So yeah, younger people are much I... less less tech li uh, tech literate in terms of like actually trying to problem solve things themselves. Yeah, I've I've heard that. Um... If it's too heavy, maybe. If the kids, I, okay, I, I, if the I kids today it. were growing up with Doom. They'd be so much better I off, think, you know. I'm in two minds by because I also gave up on a lot of things, and like, and like, it's like a skill that you have to kind of teach others, like, like how to investigate and how to get information. I just feel like they get information differently because like, there's another thing where it's like, I don't know if you've heard this, was like the generation above us um, would have to like type codes into like their um, PC to get like some of the game stuff working. Obviously, they had no idea what they were doing, but they had places to like know how to do that. So I don't know, I just feel like different, in some cases, like just different eras for different people. So I'm like, eh, I feel like maybe we just got worse at teaching kids. Yeah, maybe. Um, so the actual game itself is split up into three main areas. So you start off at the house and then there's like a mini game where you play keep up the balloon and you have to keep up like five times and then it goes on. And it's just like, there's these mini games and then they, you go to places that you would have gone to around the show. So there's like, you go to the play park and then the, you play the floor is lava, which is like a very simple platforming sort of section. Or you go to the beach and you have to find stuff, I believe. I'm trying to remember everything you do in the game because it was, it was so short sort of thing and very simple. But the, the main like story beat of the game is... Your dad tells you about how they made a treasure map, but they don't have all the pieces of the treasure map. So you then have to put the pieces together to, in order to try and find the ultimate treasure. Right. Okay. But uh, this is just showing you like how short is one episode. And I think there's like four episodes sort of thing. Like it is a very like short game. And I think, I, you know, obviously I would say if you're not playing this with a child or are a child, probably just don't play this game. <laughs> even right, even if you're a fan right. of the television show, I guess. Uh, but here's me like optionally playing one of the mini games. Like the, I guess there's a little bit of replayability with the mini game stuff. I don't know if there's like a co-op thing where you can play with somebody locally. Let me check the store page. Um, yeah, there's a split screen. So I think that would make a lot of sense if you could play like these mini games together sort of thing. Yeah, um, that would be pretty cool. Because I think a lot of games you're, you're meant to like play with, or like, because like, because you kind of have to watch what your child's doing with games. It's like you kind of want to, be able to like, have some interaction, right? That's what's well, it's like when you. um, like my my niece is super young. She's like not even two yet, but um, she's always very interested when I'm playing again. Like I was on the Switch, yeah. and she's she was like, oh, I want to see what's happening on the screen, sort of thing. Like I'm playing um. Super Mario 64 on the Switch emulator and um, like the Switch Online one. And I'm like just jumping around and then I'm like, yeah, so if you jump backwards, hit, if you do a backwards long jump up these stairs, you can actually speed run past this. Sec I'm like teaching her like, uh, you know, all the speed run tips. Obviously, she has no idea what's going on, but I just think it's hilarious that I would be teaching her Mario 64 speed run techniques at that age. Uh um, can yeah. I keep them when they're like young? Yeah. Got to get Doom out. I'm not sure my niece Doom. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that that's the play. Um, yeah, I've been playing some cozy games recently, and this one was like one of the ones I just decided to put on for a laugh and stream to some friends just to see if there was any redeeming qualities for an adult to play this. 
My answer is oh, you, no. You, you did speedrun it, right? You did completely. I can play it, it if you want. It. You could sit down and play the game in one in under an hour. Um, okay. Also, a controller is required to play this game. There is no mouse and keyboard support as well. Oh, so you need a controller. Um, let's move on to a cozy game with more substance. Um, Light your frontier. Uh, I played this in the uh, the demo fest, I believe it was the previous one we had, and I played it for like an hour or so, and I kind of wanted to stop playing because I knew it was coming to Games Pass. I was like, oh, I think I'm just gonna go in and play as much as possible in the Games Pass early access Man. release sort of thing. That is that looks so um, satisfying though. This, yeah. this is like farming Slime Rancher style farming. You yeah, know, that immediately, that. Well, like, concept. I was trying to explain the concept to uh, what it was, and my friend uh, Michael Scorn Retorts was like, oh, it's kind of like Slime Rancher. I was like, oh, that's the like one of the perfect ways to describe this game, yeah. It, if you've played the game, it's... I think somebody on the Steam reviews even said, like, it's like Slime Rancher minus the slimes and with more ranching. Yeah. But there kind of is slime yeah, in the okay. game, but it's not, like, slime slime. It's, like, stuff you clean up, like... Oh, okay. These gunk. days, most of the get most of the time, I feel like I'm just yeah, like the gunk. Um, most of the time these days, I'm feeling like I'm describing games while describing other games. Like every game, I'm like, oh, it's yeah. kind of like this game mixed with this game mixed with this game, and it's a lot easier. But it also requires you to have not like specific knowledge of specific games, and if you don't, then that's just a really poor way to describe <laughs> something because. <laughs> If I'm like, oh, it's like Slime Rancher, and also like you clean up stuff like Power Wash Simulator and the Gunk, and also <laughs> there's like really interesting tech stuff you can do that's like satisfactory without the automation. That's great if you know those games, but if you yeah, don't know yeah, any yeah. of those games, you have no idea what I'm talking about. I think, I think it's worth like trying that relative description, and then people are like, what? And then you have to go, okay, how would I describe it? Yeah. So if they do know, you don't have to do any extra work. So. Well, I know you know all those games, but I don't know if yeah, anyone listening know. knows all those games. <laughs> I don't um, know. Yeah, maybe not everyone. But I completely like agree. I, like, like, I, 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 like I know if I said to you, like, oh, it's like Satisfactory and so on. You, you, would, you yeah. know what Satisfactory is, because I know that you know that game. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it, it's really cool because... So the way it works is... So the main story was that Earth has sort of become this uh, dried-up resource. You know, it's impo getting impossible to live there. They've sent out these mechs to different uh, faraway planets in order to try and test out alien um, planets to see if it's possible to start uh, human life there. So you're, basically your mission is to go out and terraform these planets in order to um, cool. make them inhabitable for humans. So um, a lot of the time see, there's different areas of the map and these maps will have different resources and these areas of the map usually will be have this corruption right so they'll have like weeds there that you need to get rid of and they'll have yeah. slime and stuff like that and they'll have like a a progress bar and once you've like like done like the power washing thing where you blast away the slime with water or you um suck up the weeds with the vacuum harvester um that area then the next day will become lush of resources and that basically is like the progression of the game so you need to clean up different areas to unlock new resources to progress through the game and then uh certain areas have tougher weeds and like uh tougher uh slime so you need to be like oh i need to upgrade my irrigation hose in order to wash away this level of slime but i can't do that until um i get this resource so it like the game pushes you to explore different areas and unlock stuff by getting new technology sort of thing i think it's quite a good way to do yeah, it that's, that's um, a good idea, yeah. so it's like half exploration like, and half like tech like building stuff yeah farming and, progression is something like a lot of games i feel like do an okay job but like never well, not really yeah not like never, almost like, it, sometimes it cannot be great Almost all the progression is done through uh, farming. Um, so there yeah, is there like is that. iron ore stuff. So you can you can go out and like mine, you will need to go and mine ores uh, and like cut down trees for wood and rocks and stuff. But yep. most of the stuff is planting seeds to get um, like uh, fruit and vegetable stuff, and then 
using uh, presses to turn it into oil. And that is like the main gate between, uh, you know, different upgrades for your mech. So you see like there's a station behind me uh, where basically you put your mech onto that and then you use certain resources in order to upgrade your mech. So I can upgrade my... Like if you saw in the beginning when I was chucking down seeds, I could target a bunch of seeds at once and then shoot them out really quickly in order to optimize my farm. And Or I had like an upgrade for the irrigation hose where I was firing in a big splash instead of having to individually do all of the different squares of the farm with the hose. Um, and yeah, so as so you not, upgrade not your mech, it also improves the efficiency of how quickly you can make your farms yeah. because... I, yeah. Um, every day when you go to sleep, um, that will automatically um, push forward the growing of your crops. And if you don't uh, water your plants, um, then they won't grow. And then uh, if you... If you water your plot, but you don't uh, put seeds into it, uh, weeds will grow and you'll have to suck up weeds. And if you don't harvest your plants, they'll die. Um, so it's like you're very much tied to being at the farm sort of thing. And then yeah. you get you upgrade your mech to allow to you do to do it quicker and go out and explore. Yeah. Um, I did find, though, there right. was like certain points of the game where it's like I'm spending my entire day going out I'm spending my entire day like planting and watering the farm and then I don't have enough time to go and explore and get the new resources that I need sort of thing. Um, that is something I would like to see improve. I don't know if that was because cause this game has multiplayer and I was wondering, well, is this game balanced for single player or is it balanced for multiplayer? Would you have somebody at the farm while you're going out exploring and you, would you switch that up? But, um, but wouldn't you want everyone to explore at once? I feel like... Um, yeah, like, explore together. So I think it's a problem potentially, or maybe it's like a different technique. Maybe. Well, it kind of know. puts like there's almost but... like a soft clock system where it's like, oh, I need to make sure I'm back at the farm before night time so I can make sure my yeah. plants are watered and I can go to sleep and I can get like your your when night time begins, um, time will just like pass without you sort I... of thing. So um, I... it'll Couldn't go to the next day. This... Couldn't they solve it by just like not having the crops die so quickly? They don't die that quickly. Like it's not like okay, so you can leave them. But you don't feel like one thing I did like about this game, which I always think should be in every uh, survival, like crafty, like farmy sort of game. If you have chests in range of where you're trying to build, it will pull from all of those chests. You do not have to have the yeah. items in your inventory. Yeah. This is one of my favorite Very quality of that. life features in like these sort of games. Yeah. Um, I generally just hate inventory sorting. I know some Tony, you kind of like building sorting machines. I in games. Okay, so my thing is, I don't want to sort myself, but I like the idea that you have to like, to some extent, build it out yourself. Like, so you kind of start from nothing, then you, like you have then a sortable system. But I still like it being sorted. Like, I think it's just, but I think different games, different, different ways of doing mm. that. I think like. Um... But I think a base for me, system, for me right. personally, it's like one of my least favorite parts of survival. I, I hate yeah. sorting inventory. So having the option to yeah. just be like, okay, I'm just going to build a really big chest and just dump everything in here. Uh, that is definitely yeah. um, preferable to me. I, I still think that should be like, maybe like if I was like like thinking about my, my optimum survival game, I think like the base chest wouldn't have that. Then like a, like a cheap-ish upgrade would like make it into that. But then, like, having a proper sorting system would then be even more efficient somehow, either in mm. storage capacity or some other system. It's how okay. I would do it um, personally, because I think, yeah, I think you should very quickly get some sort of pulling from chest system. The way the, way the uh, farming is set up in this game is very almost like a, a Terra Nil system, where you're basically trying to get to the point where you're just using all of nature and trying to have as least impact as possible on the environment. Um, That's really cool, yeah. So like we're efficient, efficient farm. Yeah, so you you start off like early game land. with um, the way that you use furnaces. You have to get coal, and coal's kind of a tough resource to get because there's not really like a coal. You can't grow coal, so it's not like oh. something you can infant. And there's you can't automate it, so you have to go out into the world and you have to go and farm it. Like it's inside caves even, so you can't go inside in your mech and use your drill. 
um, you need to um, go out of your mech and like manually farm it with your pickaxe. But you do eventually get to a point where you can grow these glow fruit trees and then you can use a machine to dry them out, like a solar dehydrator to dry them out, which is uh, you don't need power for. And then basically these dried out glow fruit um, become your next coal. So it's basically you're getting to a point where all of your energy is coming from farming rather than having to rely on the the like the coal that you have to go out and manually mine like you were early game. And even yeah. like with the farm stuff, I can build these small plots, but as you get through the game, you can build bigger plots. And then eventually you get to a point where you can turn your tractor, uh, your your mech into a tractor and you can just go and manually plow plots into the ground to a point where I had That's like cool. my house and then I built like a... So when you, when you have your uh, production machines in a shed, they are massively, they have increased production rates. Um, so I built like this this big shed which had like all of my machines in and it had like a path that went down to my house because another thing about this game is you have uh what's called a cozy bonus and this is actually like an in-game mechanic where if you put like decorational stuff next to your house it gives you yes, bonuses yeah, for the game yeah that, um yeah i think every game should have that. so like you see here um hang on i'll go back a second um because I've got enough decorations next to this house, I um, have a chance to find additional resources in the wild. Um, and if I get in, if I add more decorations to it, I'll have animals have a chance to dig up additional resources when fed. Um, so that's another thing. Um, the way so when you go and mine resources, they will eventually come back. Um, I love the 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 rain on the on the windshield effect they have for this game. By the way, I think it looks so great. Oh, and weather really... is really important I, I was, as well. I'll go into that. In a I bit. was thinking about this the other day. Actually, it's like I feel like people because I, I watch Minecraft videos still, yeah. right? And like they they always complain about like um like video compression when it rains. I was thinking it doesn't have to literally be rain in the world to show rain. Like you can have yeah. like in this case you'd have it on the window screen, or you could have it, like puddles, splashes. You don't yeah. actually need the rain to like physically be in the world ruining the bit, right? And I was like, yeah, and, like I think just other ways to display rain makes it is a, is the actual good part of rain. So, yeah, this is really good. But yeah, the the really so there's there's a what was what was I going to talk about before the weather? Um, I can't remember now. Um, oh, coziness oh, bonus. Coziness. Yeah, so yeah. eventually you'll learn to build bigger houses and then that'll give you access to more coziness bonuses. And then also, uh, when you want... So if I want resources to respawn, they will eventually slowly over time. But one thing I could do is like, I can go to the biome that has like the copper, for example. And if I feed the nests of the animal there, that increases the production rate of the resources in that area. So there's, there's this whole like added mini game of like making food for the animals to make sure that i feed them like this is what i was getting into like it's very ecologically friendly like um almost like terraforming kind of yeah. progression in this game um but yeah um the weather's quite important because uh, you can get really positive ones like rain's really good because when it rains i don't have to water my crops so that gives me a lot more time to do other things. So I just have to plant my seeds and then all of my soil is pre-watered. Uh, uh, so I don't have to do that for that day. There's also random events that can happen. So there'll be like um, weeds that will fly down from the sky and try and uh, destroy your crops. So you need to stand there for a minute sucking up the weeds, um, which, you know, if you leave them, will be bad for your... Um, your farm but also when you suck up them you get like this purple goo resource that you need to build um some of the more advanced stuff or you can turn it into decorations as well you can also build a trading post so you'll have a merchant that comes every so often and if you have like an abundance of a certain resource you can be like oh i'm going to sell that and i'm going to buy seeds for this other resource that i need so there's like an it's like it's like slime ranch's like economy system where you can sell yeah stuff to to buy other stuff that you need um and you can also buy uh cosmetic blueprints so everything you can so the three things you can buy from the merchant are seeds for uh to 
grow more plants. I think you can only buy seeds that you've already found as well. So there's not you can't just like unlock oh, progression through the that, merchant. Yeah. That's a cool. Yeah, I, I appreciate that sort of system. Yeah. There's cosmetics for your so mech, ribbon, which oh, yeah. will give you no bonuses, but will make your mech look cool. Like I, I had my mech. I put like oh. knight knight armor on my. On my mech. Oh, that's good. Oh man. That's and then cool. the third one I'm, is I'm the blueprint. The blueprints to buying the cosmetic stuff, which will increase your coziness bonus. So even if, so I was actually, as a um, extrinsically motivated player, I was actually yeah. going around and building like a well decorated house just yeah. to increase my yeah. that... co- my actual bonus in game to yeah. give me this like is why more I like powerful. That yeah, I, I I'm gonna say as well. Like, even as someone who, like likes making stuff look pretty, like I think having an extra mechanic added to it as well is makes it even better. Mm. So, I, I yeah, it's just a great great system overall. Yeah, I like that. But yeah, like I think at one point I just dismantled my farm and rebuilt it to be more efficient. At one point as well, I was like, okay, I'm yeah. I'm just going to build like a big house. I'm going to have like a big plot of fu- like farm. I-, I went into like the tractor mode and just mowed out my my <laughs> my farm that I wanted and put my all of my machines yeah. in convenient place. Like, you can build these silos that have like yeah. massive, that can hold like thousands of resources, but can only hold one type of resource. So it's like, yeah. oh, I'm just going to put all of yeah. my plant fiber into here, right? Uh, which was really really cool because then if I put my um, everything close together, I can make sure that my building stuff is always in range of my chests, so I can always just pull stuff from my chest, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so this, this game here. is this an early access? Like I can't. Remember yeah. So this re- this is an early thing. access, and on okay. Games Pass, it's um, what's so it, it called? Like... Um, Oh, game preview is what it's called but yeah so this <laughs> okay. is the this is the mech upgrades tree so you have like farming gathering and traversal so you can get like faster um you can run faster you can get a bigger backpack you can increase your thrusters and then there's ones that you need for progression like a stronger irrigation hose stronger vacuum sort of thing and then just ones that are generally useful like i didn't know the value of the seed launcher i was like oh how much would i actually use that and then when i started using it i was like oh the seed launcher is really useful um so it's pretty cool like i i i got to the end of the early access um like where it currently is right now and i unlocked all of the mech upgrades so i've i've pretty much done all the content that's available for this game so you tried everything yeah 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 i found it really fun Uh, i thought it was a really relaxing game yeah it's quite a bit you can do already but hopefully more stuff more progression added later. Yeah, I played so to get to the end game uh, of this game at the moment. It took me eighteen hours to um, get to the current end game. Like there is story in the game, uh, but there is like an entire area that's blocked off that you can't get to yet. So I'm guessing that's going to be added later as additional content. Um, I'll just see if they've got like a roadmap on their store page or anything about what they're going to add. Um, Because I got it on the Games Pass. Um, so I'm just... Okay, so... No, I don't know if there's a roadmap or not. I know that it's like a new dev studio because my friend Martin's going to game dev school. And I was streaming this to him, and he said, oh, cool, you're playing this game. I said, yeah, about how do you know this game? He said, oh, the game dev school in Sweden I'm going to, the people who made this game uh, went to the same school as me. I was like, oh, that, that's pretty funny. I'm like, yeah, the game's really cool. Yeah. Because um, yeah. he said they, they, yeah, they put out a post. It's got multiplayer as well. I tried to convince one of my other friends who has Game Pass to play it with me, and he was like, nah, I'm not going to play it. So I was like, okay. I'll try out the single player experience. Cause I feel like I definitely f- you definitely would complete the early access quicker if there's multiple people. Like it probably wouldn't take yeah, you sure. as long. But I still think this game would be really fun to play co op, especially when you have that time where you have like oh I need someone needs to stay at the farm and plant stuff. It's like well I can go out and explore or gather resources and you can kind of divvy up tasks sort of thing. 
again mm. like i think yeah this would be really fun like you can also like get plants and crush them up into uh paint and like paint everything you can paint your mech and stuff like that um there's a lot of content you can do and you can just build the most efficient farm there's story stuff which i don't know if you want me to go into story stuff or not um uh but basically i'll just know, say no. like one of the main forces of the game is as you clean up and uncorrupt these areas you'll see a cutscene of a door that's slowly starting to light up and then eventually okay. you will uncorrupt all the areas and you'll get to go into the door and see what's inside of there and that okay. going into there opens up the end game a little bit more uh, but i'm just really excited to see where this game is ends up in like a year or two after early access because i think what's in the game right now is really good but i think there is like tons of potential in the uh, full release of this game uh, because there is so much more they could add to this and it's already so good at the moment um which is really really cool to see um but yeah what, what do you think of this with because i wasn't sure because i, I think... know yeah. I, one thing I'll say is there's almost no automation in the game. So there's mm -hmm. no like conveyor belts. There's no like things sucking up things no. them in chests. Like it is very much set up to have it be a bit more manual sort of thing. But it, yeah, because like, like, like Slime Ranch, right? I think that makes sense as long as the upgrades are there to like make you. There's no like sprinklers to automatically water your plants and stuff like that. Well, that's what rain rain is the nature of sprinklers. Yeah, and you like you can build a weather station so you can plan out your upcoming days and be like, oh, it's going to rain tomorrow. I'm going to go out and explore tomorrow, sort of thing. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I yeah I want to try this. I might wait until there's more content maybe before picking it mm. up. But I, I think what's here uh, it's, is it's on like Games Pass. So it's true. Another Games Pass game. It's yeah, as soon as I saw style, this, as, as soon as I saw this coming out Games Pass, I was like, oh. There's something I've got like no risk to check out. I can just load it up, and if it's good, it's good. And if not, then you know it's on Games Pass. I didn't buy the game, so yeah, uh, it's, it was really fun. I really enjoyed. I think I gave it like four stars on uh, my ratings list, which is quite good considering this game's in early access now. So I see a lot of room for improvement there. You know, yeah. But yeah, let's talk about the final game, the final cozy game I played, also on Game Pass. Uh, little Gator game. So I actually played this game um, on a Steam Next Fest not that long ago. Maybe la I think it came out last year. Uh, but they just added it to Games Pass. And I just finished playing Lightyear Frontier and also Persona 3 Reload, which is like 80 hours long. I was like, I'm just going to play a short game. And this game, I think, is listed at like three or four hours. And I think that's how long it took me to complete it. It is... Uh, essentially a casual, cute, like, platformery, collectathony, like, almost like Zelda-y sort of game, I would say. Like, think of, like, okay. uh, Breath of the Wild, um, of just going around areas and um, collecting things. Uh, or, like, um, it, like, the game has a glider in it, for example. And I always say, how can you make a bad glider in a game? Because I just think gliders are always improved games in a lot of ways. And I think I the like, glider's fun in this game. I think that should be like an April Fool's challenge, like make a bad glider. Have you seen the one of um, UX designers designing the worst volume slider and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that stuff's that's hilarious. That's my favorite. I, oh, I, Baloney's I back, baby. I think challenges like that. My name is Baloney. Baloney. Uh, but yeah, the main uh, the main story of the game is you are a little gator, and you used to your sister used to make games for you to play in the woods, and you had a lot of fun. Uh, but your sister gets older, and she basically is too busy to play games with you anymore. So you have this right. great plan in order to get uh, into a group of your friends and build a game um, together to get your sister to try and play with you again. So that's like the, the the main like wholesome story of the game. It's like this little gator just wants to play with his sister again. He's too busy with school and work now. Um, yeah, that's cool. This is a wholesome a wholesome uh, story. Yeah. But basically, 
it's like set up like a almost like a Zelda game where it's like your friends give you quests and then once you complete that quest it's like now you have the sword and now you can destroy pots and now you have the shield and then the shield you can surf on and that unlocks like it's it's almost like a like a Zelda y like Metroid Vania game almost like very lightly in a sense. Um but yeah, it's pretty fun. It's very simple, I will say. Um, it is very much about going around, destroying. Like most of the quest will be, "Hey, I need you to go to the to go to the top of this mountain," or "I need you to destroy these cardboard cutouts of monsters," and they're very like simple but repetitive. And I would say like if this game was longer. I think I would have been annoyed by it, but I think because it was so okay. um, short, I think that um, it's actually not that bad. Hang on a sec. Gator, Gator. Oh, I just realized that most of the recording is uh, messed up. Even though it looked fine in the preview, um, it uh, wasn't didn't update and was just showing me a static image, so I might have to fix it in editing, and it might look weird. But anyway, um, the least yeah. bad option. I, the I least bad ask, option. Um, before we stopped, uh, yeah. Do you think? I don't know. Do you think there's like a, 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 ch a children should play this game? Like, do you think it's like yeah. made for? I don't know. Like, I'm just saying what the demographic is. It's definitely. Um, I think this is a. In contrast to Bluey, Bluey looks like a game for kids and is a game for kids. I think this is yeah. a game that children could play, but actually a lot of adults would get a lot out of this game because Little Gator Game is a game that's set up about sort of revisiting your childhood. Like, that's the main yeah. story thread of the game is um, the idea of your sister's too old to play games now and you're kind of seeing the world through a child's lens of being like, oh, well, yeah, yeah. I just want to play games with you and have fun again. It's a very, like, wholesome, heartfelt sort of game. Well, it's like if you're, if you're a kid playing that, it wouldn't make any sense. Like, why am I trying to do it for the sister? Whereas, yeah, if you're an adult, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. But it's like, yeah. it's, just, it's like very um, unoffensive, the game. It is like very relaxing to play, like just moving around and like doing stuff is pretty fun. Like, um, again, you have like a sword and a shield, like tell that you go around destroying pots, you have a glider, you have it like that stamina system where you climb up the side of the wood. Like, that's an ability oh, or not? Yeah, I really like, yeah, I really like those. Um, so that's why I'm saying, like, it's like almost like a Z Zelda Metroidvania -y game where. Um, the map unlocks more as you gain more movement ability sort of thing. Hmm. Which is pretty cool. But this is like... I guess mem everything wraps up in the context of the story, which I think, yeah, makes a lot of Yeah, the main story sense. is you're trying to do quests to emulate playing the game and get your sister involved, and you realise that your sister doesn't want to play the game with you sort of thing. And yeah. then um, you basically... Um, you keep making the game bigger and bigger and invite them up. Like, you go out and explore and you meet, make new friends. And, like, the basic thread of the game is you're just going out doing these quests for people to get them to agree to join your big village of people in order to make this fantasy game that you're playing and making out of, like, cardboard monsters even bigger. Um, it's a very, like, fun, short, relaxing game. And there's even, like, um, good stuff at the end where if you're like, okay, I didn't meet everyone that I could meet. Um, the game gives you like a megaphone to um, that will just call out to anyone that you haven't met yet and then you can go and talk to them as like an end game thing to get your collectathon thing going. And then yeah, um, nice. another thing for completing the game was destroying every single cardboard monster and... Um, there's a phone thing that will just show you where to go in order to in order to find cardboard monsters you haven't destroyed yet. I decided that I didn't want to destroy every cardboard monster. I'm like, I'm kind of done with the game at this point. Like, I've had a, a fun time playing it. I mean, there was one point where I got a little bit lost of where I was supposed to be going. There is no map in the game. Um, the best piece of advice I can give you is try and climb somewhere high 
and then use that as a landmark in order to um, figure out where you're going. Like, um, there's like a big radio tower on the map and then on like a certain area of the map, there's um, like windmills. So you can go, oh, the windmill area is over there because you can see these giant uh, wind farm things from right. really see, far away. So, so you have to manually do a Assassin's Creed climbing tower. Yeah, and it gets easier them, because yeah. you get more stamina as you play the game. There's this monkey with bracelets, and the okay. more bracelets he gives you, the more stamina you get. It makes it easier. And mm. you get that by climbing up things, like he's usually at the top of certain things. Uh, but yeah, this game is uh, really, really... Uh, short and it's one of those short and sweet games that i would recommend to most people if you're like i just want to play like a because just moving around and uh you know interacting with the world is pretty fun it's very simple like there's not much more so you're basically going around collecting scraps because people don't use money in this world because you're inside a game right so yeah cardboard scraps are the currency of the world and it's funny because there's a point where your friend wants to buy ice cream, and a guy who's selling ice cream is like, oh, that'll be $3, and he's like, well, how many scrap is that? And he's like, what do you mean? You need real money? <laughs> so then he starts, like, he goes on his phone, and he starts texting people, and he's like, can anyone lend me some money? Like, send me some money over the phone? He's like, I've got a 50 cents I can send you, and he's like, oh, I've got $2 I can send you? He's like, oh, cool, and he's like, and his sister's like, here's six bucks, buy two ice creams. <laughs> That's kind of funny, yeah. But yeah. There's a lot of like light humorous moments like that in the game. Yeah. So it's like a it, it's a nice little game. So if you're if you're looking for a break from gaming, I think little gator games a nice little cozy game to play. Yeah. I recommend it to most people. It doesn't doesn't ever say as well. That's good. Yeah. But yeah, those cozy games that I've been playing over the past couple of weeks, and uh, hopefully this uh, video comes out alright. But um, yeah, I'd I highly recommend. Most of these, like, Lightyear Frontier was really good. Um, Little Gator Games, pretty good, pretty decent, quite short. And then Bluey's good if you're five years old and you love Bluey. Um, and you love a uh, speedrun. Don't forget the speed. Run. And you're a speedrunner, yeah. But we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.